Okay, so I think I am streaming now. If not, I'll just be talking to myself for an hour. Um, so welcome back. Today, we're going to take, um, kind of start where we left off on Tuesday. And um, I'm working on a drawing of my bunny, Bun Bun, who's like right behind me, right now asleep in her litter box underneath the table. Um, so yesterday, I did a little photo shoot with her. And this is my iPad. Um, so I took a whole bunch of, she, she can't take a bad photo. She's the cutest thing. Um, so I just, I chose this one, uh, cause I, what I'm thinking about for her drawing, she's got such a big personality for a little thing. And I wanted to create something, not that she's sick or anything right now, but she is definitely a super senior. And, uh, I've been noticing she's slowing down a little bit and I just kind of wanted to, to have a piece that kind of summed up her personality. And I also wanted to do a demonstration of a drawing from start to finish. So I thought this was a good way of kind of, of doing that. So I chose this one because she feels kind of monumental in this photo I took of her. Um, and I, I thought about it since Tuesday and I think I'm gonna make her change the scale up, which I like to do a lot in my art, um, and uh, make her kind of like a mountain. Uh, so I was had this idea of, you can see, I just did this. Um, I kind of blocked out two figures here, and I think I'd like for those figures to be mountain goats. Uh, just, I just, I feel like it suits her and her big personality. So she's kind of like a, a, a mountain, and these goats have kind of scaled her, and I might have another one kind of coming up this direction, and they've kind of just scaled her <laughs> to make it to the summit. So what I'm going to work on today is just continuing drawing on her. I'm building layers. And let's see. I'm using B and 2B. Here's my 2B. I accidentally stepped on it yesterday and broke the lead off. So I'm going to sharpen it up again. And you know what I am going to do is run and get a paper towel. So I realized on Tuesday I was drawing with my hand directly on the paper and that is just not good. So I'll be right back. One second. Okay. I got paper towel and I'm going to, I use the paper towels for blending, which is this one right here but I'm also just gonna use it to sit my hand on so I don't share bad habits with everybody. I feel like I need to be more responsible. Um, the oils from your hands on the paper is not generally a good thing. So this just kind of protects the paper. And here we go. So I'm just gonna start drawing. Um, what I did at the end of the video on Tuesday, I don't know if it was still live, but what I like to do, and, and why um, it takes me so long sometimes to do these drawings, is I like to build up layers. And so I'll sometimes work on this for a couple hours, and then I'll go over it with a blending tool or you know paper towel, and I just kind of blend it all in. And so it loses some of the lines, but then that's where I come and start building them up. So that's exactly what I'm doing right now, is just picking areas to start building up those layers of lines. I wouldn't say it's true cross hatching. I do some cross hatching. But now it's just all about kind of building it up. And really, for fur, I like to follow the direction of the fur. And I like to give dimension out, dimensionality, so where, where the chin is here. I really like to make that pop. And Bun in her younger days, she used to have this really big, it's a dewlap, like kind of fat thing around her neck. But as she's kind of slimmed out now that she's a senior, it's kind of disappeared. But there was a time where this thing would come like way out like this. And if you've ever seen my, um, if you ever saw my uh, Hear No Evil print that I did, this big, Left. That was her in her younger days. I'm going to look at 
the photo now. And the reason I'm looking at the photo so much for this drawing is because I really want to kind of keep it looking like Bon Bon because it's kind of a tribute to Bun. But if it was me working on my personal work, I wouldn't really be looking at reference at this point um, because I would have gotten most of the form down. This part down here is, is darker. Sharpen this and get a better point. Kind of killed this pencil and I stepped on it yesterday, but I think it's going to be okay. Can you see that? Yeah, it looks like it's starting to show up. And now she's just got a big hollow eye because I haven't really, I don't think I'm going to put the details of the eyeball in yet until I kind of work out the composition around her because I could have her kind of looking back at these mountain goats or maybe looking down at the, at the mountain goats that will be grazing down here. Everybody's asleep behind me. Yeah, the cat, two dogs. Can you see them on the couch? That's their spot. And the bun underneath by the coffee table. Hello. Yeah, you made it on. Thank you. Oh, we're all doing good here. How about you guys? I'm really slowly working this direction here, kind of building layers of fur. And I'm having her fur kind of come like this over her, her forearm. So I'm aware of that anatomy as I'm making kind of the fur marks. And I'm not 100% sure if it can zoom in to see those very fine lines. I wonder if I bring this up or if it just makes it worse. Ah, just dropped the pencil. that it's like struggling to focus on it. I don't think it wants to focus on the lines. Oh, there, you can kind of see it now. That's like hyper-focused. So it actually looks like in between that and that. So. Working this direction over bun.
Oh my gosh, that's a huge jump. Whew. Did it snow? Where are you in Arkansas? It's mostly ice, right? Um, it's probably super icy out. That's when I see all those videos on YouTube of that cars sliding around. Yeah, I wish I could pick up the lines on this. It's more accurate. Um, I'll just have to kind of tilt it up to the camera every once in a while so that the lines can be seen better. It's kind of fun if I stare up. I'm looking at the screen right now and like not look down at the paper to see if I could do that. It's kind of fun. It's probably not the best thing to be teaching or say that I do, so I'll, I'll stop that, but it's kind of funny, indirect way of, of drawing. Yeah, ice, it's just, yeah, that's just cold. That's just cold. 70 degrees is, is pretty nice. We've kind of had an unusually cool winter, or maybe we've just had such a warm, oh, somebody's at the gate. You're going to hear barking in a second, or maybe not. I think we're going to get some more rain, which is great. We had such a dry year last year. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. We, we all had that weird over Christmas break. My daughter came home with that weird sore throat coffee thing. She got better the day of Christmas, which is great. And then I came down with it the day after Christmas. So that was kind of a bummer. Went into my chest cold and then coughing and even now my voice is a little hoarse at the end of the day so i hope your family stays healthy can't stand the cold and flu season good barking good job guys their job is done they went in the backyard now they're back to sleep on the couch So now all that work I just did, all that that hatch marks I just did, now I'm I'm kind of blending it. And then I just start over. So I'm just gonna build up another layer on top of that one. I should probably look at the photo and see what that anatomy looks like. Um, it's not bad. The leg, her leg kind of comes down like this. Kind of like this little thing here, this little thing here, and kind of comes up like that. And she's got this kind of like, I think that's where her rib cage would be right there. Kind of comes down like that. There we go. See, I don't, I don't, I'm not used to like looking at the photos that much, so now it's just a matter of drawing fur and then checking back on it to make sure there's some level of accuracy but usually in my personal work accuracy is not an issue which i love that i'm in a field where i could be accuracy is not an issue because it's more about telling a story visually and using the animals kind of as the guides and a lot of these animals have become symbols i use them over and over again in my artwork to kind of tell these stories and bunnies are amazing creatures. And having one live in my house for the past, you know, six, seven, eight years, I didn't really understand how sensitive they are and how smart they are. So I took the time to kind of get to know her. And um, she's just like your dog or your cat, and, but, but more sensitive. And she reacts to the environment. She's very territorial, actually. She loves all my pets, but um, super kind of, her space is her space. Oh, how I was gonna blend. Yeah, so just, I'm, I'm doing, a, this is just like a textured paper towel. And I, I, as it gets finer, I'm gonna use more of the, the kind of really soft cotton tips 
So like say right here, if I'm gonna kind of blend in this fold here, and I just wanna blend this top part, I'm gonna use that Q-tip. And a lot of people don't, I mean, uh, people probably know, but if you get a clean cotton, cotton ball, like this one, and I was to rub it over it, it, it almost serves as an eraser, where you can kind of like erase stuff off. Um, because it, it picks up some of the dust in the, the Q-tip before you can blend it. So it's, it's, a, it's a way of kind of taking some tone off as well as blending it. It removes some, some tone. Which is good because I don't want just one round of this and then be done. I build up so many layers. I like that it takes off a little bit uses that to blend, and then it forces me to come back and add more, which is where that dimensionality comes from. Oh yeah, she's loose in the house, and she's potty trained and housebroken. So I don't know if you can see behind me underneath the table, that's um, her litter box. She has one in the living room, and then she has two in her bedroom down the hall. So she just kind of hops around, and then um, she has to go potty. She uses a litter box, and uh, it's kind of like a cat. So I change her litter box in the morning and the evening, and that's it. Um, a lot of times, bunnies like to chew on wires and whatnot, but she... When she was younger, she would occasionally chew on things, but she's a senior now, and like any senior animal, they just kind of, they do their thing, and um, she doesn't chew on anything, but I'm always very careful about anything with wires. I have an iPad charging on the TV. Anything with wires is kind of like folded up or I'm supervised, um, but when I'm not home, she has to go in her bedroom. I have like a, a little dog door that keeps her in. Her bedroom that's completely bunny proofed. It's got all the wires have plugs or have uh, covers over it, and um, there's nothing for her to hurt herself on in there. And she's got chew toys and whatnot. But she likes to be with everybody. So if everybody's in the living room, she's in here. And I have her like little food station right right back here. She's got some wheat grass, some water tin and a bowl of, of goodies that I give her every morning. No, I don't use blending stumps that much. I think, one, I never remember to buy them because I always feel like I could do a cheaper hack at home. So what I do is I just have, uh, these are those makeup Q-tips that have like that go into a tapered point and then this side's kind of it's like a more compact uh, cotton ball. Oh, you can see my thumb. I did that it's purple in uh, Muay Thai yesterday. I managed to wedge my thumb. Anyways, doesn't matter. Um, and then I use like paper towels and then on my larger works I use um, an old sock. And that's my favorite thing to blend with. Oh, what's, what's cool? <laughs> my my uh, use of, of Q-tips. <laughs> okay, so more layers are coming now. So now you can really see kind of the the forearm coming out. And I don't know if I'll keep it this pronounced, but for now, just for anatomy's sake, I'm going to leave it. Oh, yeah. Oh, the bunny. Oh, thanks. Yeah, she's pretty awesome. Old shirt. Yeah, shirts are shirts are great. It's yeah, and you can um, if you work large, you can like wrap them around your hands. 
Um, sometimes for my mural work, I'll get those big, um, like the long socks and they'll go like up to my um, elbow and I'll use my whole, the whole flat side right here. And I'll just like smear like that. And an old shirt would be perfect for that because you could kind of like wrap your arms in it and use it. Um, but yeah, a nice cotton, cotton shirt a nice small weave would be a great blending tool. And yes, if you have any questions about bunny care, I'd be happy to answer that too, because I had a bunny, you know, when I was younger, but it was when we lived in Iowa. It lived outside. They actually we had a couple and they lived in a hutch outside. So they were friendly, but they weren't really sharing a house with us. So she's my first Kind of house bunny and I didn't when um, we found her at the park you know and I got a little cage for her and everything but I just didn't want to stare at her in a cage all day and I just felt like she's a you know these animals need to be moving and so then I went on YouTube and started watching all these videos about potty trained bunnies and I was like oh I'm gonna do it if I'm gonna keep her and keep her healthy and keep us like happy too I got a I got a litter box trainer so I just dedicated some time Took a couple months, slowly transitioned her to different litter boxes and then made her space a little bit bigger and then put more litter boxes around. And then eventually when she got used to it, I could take some of the litter boxes away and we only kept one in the living room and two in her bedroom because she just got so used to going to them. So it just takes a little time and dedication, but it's totally doable and they can be part of the family and not, you know, stuck in a cage their whole life. It's always those accidental pets, you know, that you just find, or at least I have a lot of those that I just find or someone doesn't want them anymore and then I end up with them. I'm trying to be good and keep my hand on the paper towel. Someone house broke a duck? Oh, that's amazing. Sorry, I read your question about pencils then. That's fascinating. See, like anything's possible. Just take some time, a little dedication, and you could pretty much incorporate everything in your household, which is what I would love to do. I want to save every animal and put them in my house, but <laughs> that's probably not ideal. Um, so I'm using a 2B right now. Can you see it? This is a 2B. Um, I don't know what I did with my B. I was using it for another drawing yesterday and I moved it. And I just have the 2Bs here. I'll have to go find it. I think it's in the other room. Or it's the one that dropped on the ground. So right now, I'll be using just B and 2B. It's over here. Aha, uh -huh, here's the B. Okay. Here's the B. Um, a 2B because I'm just doing the line work and the B and the 2B are the best for line work. Um, and then the 4B and the 6B, I'll bring those out at the end. I'll do the eye um, to get that really dark, dark of the eye. Um, a lot of the shadows I'll go over with the 4B and 6B. But I really want to wait until I get most of the fur texture is done before I bring in, I call them the big guns, but when I draw his eye in and all of that, I will definitely be using the 6B to color it in. <clears throat> and I'm not using um, soft charcoal on this. This is just all carbon pencil right here. This is just 6B and then transfer it with paper towel to here. So there's um, no soft charcoal in the small drawings. When I do my large drawings and when I get my studio set up in the next few months, um, I don't know if I, I mentioned it, but I'm, I'm converting my garage right now to an art studio. And when that's all set up, I'm going to be able to stream me working on my large mural work. So that's, that's a different process, but I do use um, charcoal dust 
for compositional work and tonal work in the large scale drawings. No H's. No, in um, carbon pencil, they only come in the B's. So you've got the, the B, which is this one, which is the most, um, is the best for line work. And then you have up to the 6B, which is really great for the dark tones and shadows. If you want to get in the H's, you got to um, switch to the graphites. And graph graphite's great too, because a 6B in graphite, you'll, you'll get quite a dark tone, but I never spoke to me because of that sheen from different angles when, you know, the sheen from graphite. And I felt like it lost some of its three-dimensionality with that sheen, but I do occasionally use graphite pencils in some work as kind of a finishing layer. Oh, how much shading with well what I'm doing here is building up layers so and then let me lift this up so you can see it a little bit better just wait for it to focus on the come on there it wants to focus on the lines oh, come on Come on, it's not, can you see the lines in there? Um, so what I'm doing instead of, of getting tone from from uh, just the lead, I'm just building up layers. So this, this obviously has way more layers than this right here. This has just one overlay where this is probably five or six now on it. And then I'm gonna, I can push it back. So then I'm gonna come and just kind of push this back blend it in and I kind of scrub the paper I kind of scrub the paper a little bit gives it that soft texture and then I'm going to come and build over it again any particular <laughs> I don't know a lot of super rich artists <laughs> um, the brand that I choose um, is Wolf's Carbon Pencil. Let me get one that's a little bit cleaner. Wolf's Carbon. It's W-O-L-F-F-S Carbon Pencils. There's only two brands that I know of. It's Wolf's and General's. And I prefer Wolf's over General's. Um, I think it's two, a little over $2 a pencil. If you buy in a set, I think it's a little bit cheaper. I buy mine in bulk online now. And so... When you buy in bulk, it's like, you know, or over, if you order over 20, whatever the sale is, you get like 10% or 15% off. So as far as, you know, art supplies go, it's, it's much more economical than if you were an oil painter, acrylic painter, or even watercolorist. Um, one pencil lasts quite a long time, especially if you take good care of them. So buying a set, I, I think it's $9 and... It's been a while since I just bought like the B through 6B set. Um, I don't think it's going to break the bank. I think it's still under $10 for the set. Oh, we have generals. Yes. And that's, that's funny you said that because the Wolf's Carbon, which is, I've tried several times to use it. They feel just like charcoal pencils to me. Um, and I'm like, I don't, I feel like you, you're right. You can't go backwards that much with them because I think they have more, the pigment in it or more of the, more concentration in it. I would say try the wolves because that's all I do now because I erase so much. Oh, look at that mark. That was an accident, but I'll show you. So I'm going to see, look, I accidentally smudged it here. Like, look at how much. I can just take away, except that terrible smudge. That looks like that's part of the paper, but that's okay. I'll work with it. Um, and the generals, you're right. It, I think it, it stains the paper more and it's got more material in it. So this might be a good medium for you, the, the Wolf's Carbon. 
Oh, how much am I drawing from instinct? Hi. And how much am I drawing from photo? Um, well, yesterday I did mostly drawing from the photo for the head. Right now, I just looked at the photo a few minutes ago um, just to get the basic anatomy, and that was kind of this part here and kind of where a rib cage is. So right now, all I'm doing is just rendering fur. But I'll look back at the photo at some point just to see if it's pretty accurate. Oh, look at that. You know what I think I did? I think I spit on the paper on accident when I was blowing. So that's a no-no, and that's what this mark is right here. It's showing up more on the camera than it actually looks like on paper. So, oh well, we'll work around it. Hello, is that Happy Z eighty <laughs> nine? Hi. So this fur, I'm, I'm following the direction that the fur would be on the bunny, which is kind of like a down and, and back direction. Oh, the spit on <laughs> And wolves in general sound like a good, that is, yeah, it is funny. It's like the bad pencil and the, the generals to the rescue. But in reality, the wolf is the way to go. So. Yeah, the spin on the paper is not ideal. But once it dries, I'll be able to work around it a little bit. I'm not going to work on it too much. So that's what happens, and that's a good example of what happens if you get too much oil or whatever on your paper. The, the paper will absorb it and then pull in like the dust from the pencil into it, so it makes it really dark. Although I kind of like the shape of it because it almost looks like a shooting star, but you can't see it. Again, this is not 100% accurate of what it looks like for me. Um, that's kind of cool. Now it's got my DNA on it too. There we go. So I'm just kind of I don't want to do too much down here because I do want to put, as I was talking about earlier, kind of a mountain goat theme around my mountain of a bunny. So I'm going to leave it pretty light down there. I'm not going to render it like I did the face. This is kind of where a rib cage would be. There we go. So you want something to feel kind of volumetric. It's nice to make the lines like go around it. So if I want this to kind of feel like it's coming out like a rib cage would in real life, I'm just kind of like forming these lines around that volume. kind of see it starting to happen right here. Uh, yes. So, yes, they are. It's too bad you can can't see it. I can try to hold them up again, but yes, these, let's try it. Okay. Come on, can you kind of see them? 
I wonder why it can't focus. And kind of see the lines are. I wonder if I turn it this way. There you go. I wonder if I put something dark in there with it. If it would like pick up the. Yeah, I don't know enough about technology to figure that out. But yeah, they're. They are curved around where her rib cage would be. Just like here, they're coming out this direction, and then over here, following the shape. Oh, here it goes. Yeah, I like that. See if my spit marks are dry yet. You see that? It's like that's like a permanent mark on the bunny's face. It's like my shooting stars. So this, I think, form-wise, is it probably kind of connect down here. Again, I'm not too worried about the accuracy down there because I, I will be adding things, so I'm not going to spend too much time rendering down there. Of almost like this serpentine shape here where the rib cage would kind of connect with the front leg. And sometimes when I draw, I like to make those little things happen, even if it's not 100% accurate, accurate. I just, I like those little synchronicities and that just feel right for anatomy, even if it's not super accurate. Just kind of trick the eye a little bit and I think that's the exciting thing about being an artist is is being able to make these these little changes and and create your own little worlds, change the reality around a little bit, which is what's so powerful that that our artists can do. We can we can change the reality a little bit. For me, I'd like to leave it kind of in question. It looks accurate, but maybe something's just a little off, and I kind of like that feeling. And I beat Q-tips and Bunny's ears a lot. Uh, it started off as, a, they, as this hear no evil theme, and then it kind of it kind of morphed into into more symbolism. I tend to use it a lot: the hear no, speak no, see no evil. And I like to use the bunnies because they're such an innocent on this planet. planet. All animals are innocent on this planet. 
And so, so what, what better, better way, way to, to tell, tell humanity's story through using animals? cool part too because they can turn out to get worried about these kinds of things it's just a matter of, of making it work i'll work it into their mark later but you can imagine what would happen if oils from your hand like if i just did this my hands, hands were oily, what would happen when I drew over it? So this is where I want one of my mountain goats to be. And I want it to look like they're kind of, like, you know, climbing up a hill, like summiting. Oh, yeah, yeah the, the oils. oils. Have, have you ever been, been um, to a museum or a gallery and they have a mirror on the wall and it says, touch the mirror, and then it shows you, like, you could see your fingerprint on the mirror and it, it kind of, like, demonstrates what you would leave behind if you touched the artwork? Uh, that's pretty fascinating because there's a lot of stuff on our skin that we're not even aware of. They can mess up a drawing or a painting. And, you know, spitting on your artwork's not ideal either, so I wouldn't recommend that unless you're, you know, going for a new type of performance art. Maybe I'll do that in one of my shows. After I get a little bit more established. And I, <laughs> right now I think they'd uh, escort me out of the museum, but maybe one day. What's, what is that? Is that a, a type of uh, teaching, like a type of way online teaching? the cracking. <laughs> I 
I mean, these modes, these are so important. Let's do like turn, kind of like the flexibility in your wrists. I do a lot of stretching when I work big too because I stand, I'm on ladders. Oh, I mean, I, I'll look into it. I, I never really thought about it. Um, just getting started on this because it seemed pretty informal and I'm a pretty informal person, but I think you get that. <laughs> I'm going to look into it. Thank you. You have a lot of good ideas. I still loved your tree smoking idea um, in my chimp drawing, which I'm going to bring back and work on soon. Um, that was a fantastic idea. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, the hand exercises, they're art things. Yeah, this is an art thing. Move your hands. It's a mobility thing. Uh, I had to do physical therapy a couple years back. I had this nerve issue, and they had you like, like put a ball on this thing, and you had to like, it's like a puzzle. You had to get it to the end. You have to do this, and that was part of the therapy. So I was like, okay, I can recreate that. You know, you just kind of like, all it is is just like mobility in your wrist and just moving it to strange angles and kind of twisting and. Um, but definitely when this is something I do every day, keeping my body moving is such an important part of it. Art is a very physical thing, or at least my art is a very physical thing, so... Movement is very important to me because without it, I wouldn't be able to draw comfortably and that would be heartbreaking. So obviously in areas like this, you don't want to use your paper towel because I'm just blending the inside of the ear and I don't want more tone to get on that highlight if I don't have to. If you know something's going to be white or light, you want to try to avoid getting too much tone on there. Um, it'll just never erase quite as bright and I like to really punch my highlights and my darks. So like in the eye, I know there's going to be a highlight. Look at, look at how bright that can be. But if I put too much tone in there, it won't be that bright, and I really want it to stand out. So I can kind of see. I just did the outline of the eyeball right now with that eraser. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, I guess I wouldn't, I'm not super what you would call sophisticated. I think art, I think art has been kind of made to intimidate people in a way that is, is not serving of, of what art truly is. 
Uh, it's just a visual language, you know. And um, even our teachers, I think, have to be very careful about their language because it's so easy to discourage people as they're learning to do something that is, you know, creative and intuitive and so subjective. So I always wonder how, you know, art can be judged so harshly while people are learning to draw or paint because it is such a subjective um, medium. I mean, it, it's, so I take that as, as, a complicate, as a compliment because I think art has been overcomplicated and used as an intimidation tool sometimes to people that want to learn and be creative and tell their own stories. And it doesn't need to be that way. And fundamentally, art has been there for centuries, telling our history and our stories and our way of life. And it's a way of communicating, and it's not something that has to be scary or untouchable. Art can be inclusive, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, paper towel time. Kind of working on this shadow here. I was debating if I would just imagine another ear there, but I'm kind of liking this idea of her head being set and her ears being flat against her, almost flat against her back and not seeing the other side. So I think I'm gonna, I'm not gonna draw that. I had kind of like, you know, darkened another ear here, but you know, I don't think I'm gonna put that in there. I don't hold me to it. I might change my mind, but as of now, I'm not really interested in that. You can see how we kind of lost this form right here, this form right here of the rib cage. So I'm just going to come back in and kind of darken that up just a little bit. Yeah, I'm sorry you had that experience. Um, yeah, that's that's too bad. It, I think, unfortunately, that, that happens a lot. I went through undergrad and grad school and, and then became a teacher myself. And what I learned is that there is no right or wrong way to do art, but there are techniques that can be learned. And that's a skill. And if, you know, as a teacher, if you're teaching a skill, you know, it's our job to, to show that skill to the best of our ability. But then when it comes to a creative endeavor, there is no right way to do it. There's the, what you would call the proper way or the proper technique um, of doing it. But that doesn't necessarily make it right. Um, so how I'm drawing right now is type of cross hatching, a type of tonal drawing. It's both, it's layers. It's, it's just kind of something that has formed over the years of drawing. Wouldn't be technically a cross hatching drawing or technically a tonal drawing. And there's probably some professional artists that would say it's not a very <laughs> accurate way of drawing, but it doesn't matter. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Ugh, that's too bad. When I was teaching at the elementary school, as I got further along in, I refused to put grades on artwork because I, my argument was you can't assign a grade to a creative endeavor. So what the compromise was is I could give the students a grade on, you know, citizenship and workmanship. So if they came to class, they worked hard, they were a good citizen, that's what your grade was based on. It wasn't based on this product because especially teaching art, it's all about process. It's like, it's a learning process. It's a creative process. And sometimes the 10 steps up to the painting are more important than the finished painting because that's where the learning takes place. That's where the creativity is seen. The product is the product. So um, it really was important to me um, teaching to not assign 
value to a finished product but the process itself. Um, it's, it's too bad because if artists were really sm super smart, they'd be like, we want all these kids and all these people to love art, so let's give them an actual appreciation for what art is, and it's a creative journey. Let's not scare the crap out of them so they, the rest of their life they go, oh my gosh, I'm not good at art because in the fifth grade, my teacher told me that this was crap because, you know, this, this, and this. It's just, it doesn't allow people to be able, not everybody wants to be an artist, needs to be an artist, but we can at least, as educators, introduce them to a creative world that they can respect and relate to, as opposed to being alienated from it and to make feel, in, you know, like they can't participate, like they're not as valued as somebody else. And that is a very, very unfortunate thing. I'm trying not to spit on my drawing again. I'm glad that you were old enough to kind of be able to sip through that. back leg would fold. I think it's going to come like this. How would I like seeing art taught in school? I would love art to be taught in school, my goodness. Well, in California, it's not required, but where I am, in the city of Burbank, we have, um, our arts programs are all funded, like, by separate programs like Burbank Arts for All and um, if in, in a perfect world where art was actually taught as a curriculum and it needed to be in the curriculum I would love for art teachers to be able to foster creativity as opposed to so process driven curriculum as a as opposed to a product based curriculum just meaning that the creative process would be valued the most. That part of discussion, that part where they design their ideas, that would be the value and the product would be great. And I guarantee you so many drawings and paintings and everything would turn out fantastic. But the value and what they take home at the end of the day is that creative process. And that's what translates into the other subjects is that ability to think around problems. So a curriculum that's based on fostering creativity as opposed to a final product based on mimicking is what can allow the students' brains to develop a creative path and that will translate into the other classes. And that's the gift of art and music and theater because there's no one way to do it. But I'm not passionate about that at all. <laughs> Oh, the hardest part he was the abstract yeah abstract art is is challenging for some and and easier for others that's for sure i i i'm similar to you and then I, I i live in the visual world and i find meaning in the visual world so my language is a type of realism um and to force me to do something that is more abstracted is, is kind of like pulling teeth. Um, so I, I hear you on that. Um, and my, my idea about, there is a lot of artists that work in the abstract that are amazing draftsmen and renderers, and they choose to do the abstract world to, to tell their story. And that's amazing, and I definitely admire that. But you won't find me teaching <laughs> anything about abstraction. That's exactly, yeah. How can you tell me what is right and wrong about basically any creative endeavor? Um, and that's, that's where that danger of mimicking comes in. Um, there's something we taught like to, to draw so, in masters and to paint it. That's how they used to teach the new masters. And that's good. That, that's, a, that's a skill that you're learning. But now you have to take that skill and put it to use in your artwork, in, in your voice. 
um, and, it, and you know, mimicking abstract art is one thing, but to create your own abstract art without the meaning behind it is, is really hard, you know, because there was a reason why they abstracted their art. They were responding, responding to the art world, to the political world. Um, so yeah, I don't know how you could tell anybody was right or wrong about, especially abstract art, at least with a, like a, like a skill, like rendering a, an apple, you can come in and be like, oh, okay, look at the, look at the, you know, reflected light or and let's, let's darken the shadow and let's, let's, let's lighten this up. But abstract art, yeah, I don't know how you do that. That would be very difficult. Okay. Okay. So you mean like you want to take an idea and then kind of, kind of like sit with it for a while? This is coming. This is kind of where her leg would fold. I'm going to have that stand out. And just come down. Got the back coming like this. <coughs> Still have that weird cough from like a couple weeks ago. This is nasty bug that went around. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I hear what you're saying. So that's that's a very surrealist way of looking at things, and that that makes perfect sense to me. I I, I have a I have a, a surrealist mind as well, uh, like puzzle picture picture puzzles, and um, that makes that makes perfect sense. I mean, a cup turning into a, a building doesn't make sense, but to me, it makes perfect sense. I'm like, yeah, I get that. I have a, a print that I bought in the, it's hanging in the kitchen and it says, uh, one day this will all not make sense. And I was like, I love this. That's like my new, not new, I've had it for years, but I saw that and I was like, that makes, I love that. I love that saying. One day it'll all not make sense. I think that's better suited than the one day it'll all make sense. What you hear all the time. And what's the obsession with everybody having to have everything make sense? Okay, so I brought the rib cage back a little bit here. You can see the tone on here, but this has got quite a lot of line work in it as well. This direction, trying to keep my hand on the paper towel. Okay. 
So right now I'm just kind of making layers of lines here and they're kind of overlapping a little bit. If you can see it. Another mountain goat's got to be here. Can you see them for me? There's one that's going to be here. The one's going to be here. Yeah, I think that'd be good. The thinking, thinking process. process. <laughs> it's, it's just, just pretty, pretty random. random. So right, right now, now I'm just bringing, bringing the fur down, down like this. this. Your tail would be kind of like that. I should probably look at the photo, but I don't really want to right now. I just had to just kind of outline the eye. See it? I'm coming in really light right now. Make sure I like it. Before I use the 6B on it. I can still salvage, move the pupil around with this if I feel like it, but leave the white as big as possible because if I shrink that highlight, that's fine, but I cannot really make it bigger now.
just a little bit of the eye. I'm going to live with it for a little while, make sure I like it. Sweet behind me. See the, the gang all on the couch. Starting to come alive now. Well, thank you. Uh, it's deceiving, though. Uh, it looks like I got a lot done, but I will end up going over um, the body a couple more times, like kind of toning it out and going back to it a couple more times. And then I have to add what's going around. So I don't want to do too much down here. I'm just going to do really light tone because I'm pretty sure I'm going to add add down here and I'm definitely going to add up here maybe another one coming this way here so I'll end up probably erasing a lot of that working on the eye a little bit. I'll go back and forth a lot. And pop out the highlights.
Okay, I think, let me check the time. Yeah, I think I gotta head out. I'm working part day in here and then part of the day in the garage um, working on a large drawing. So I'm gonna head out back and work on that before I pick my daughter up from school. So thank you for joining me today and I hope everybody has a fantastic uh, rest of your week. Okay, bye-bye.